Hello, this is visionary author W. Bradford Swift, and this is a new video tutorial on a new online editing and proofreading software that I've discovered and been working with for approximately a month, a little, a little more maybe, uh, called Grammarly. And you can find out more about Grammarly. Um, you know, obviously, you can do a Google search for it, or you can also find out more about uh, this resource and other resources that I recommend uh, for writers at wbradfordswift.com forward slash resources. Now, uh, what we're looking at here is not Grammarly yet. There's Grammarly over there to the left-hand side of the page. Um, but we're looking at another uh, resource and another very valuable tool that I highly recommend to uh, writers and aspiring writers. And that is uh, one of the files that's opened up in my Scrivener file. So everything we're seeing here, all of this, is Scrivener. And I've opened it up to, uh, and I have one particular scene uh, that we're going to use as an example. Now, we're not going to get into the ins and outs of Scrivener, but I found this is how it works best for me. You may find a better way or different way to load your uh, files, your, your writing, into Grammarly itself. But I want to keep the formatting of the different scenes here. So I found it very simple to open Scrivener on one side and then to basically highlight one of the files that I want to work with, one of the scenes, and then I simply switch over here. Now I'm already, you know, I'm into my Grammarly uh, account and I just push the button here that says new. And it gives me a new place uh, to load that. So I just do a quick load on my Mac. That would be Control V. And then I just wait for a moment. And you can see right down at the bottom here, there's 44 critical issues, they say. All right. And now the point is you need to go down through. You'll see the ones that are in question over here. And they'll have different ones. And you'll go down through and decide whether or not indeed is something you want to change or not. So I'm not going to go through all 44 by any means, but I'll just show you some of them. Now this is a um, file from a science fiction uh, middle school uh, book called Space Hoppers. And you'll see right away that Quirk, which is actually the name of one of the main characters, um, is questioned. Okay, so I don't want to change the title of Quirk, so I'm just going to go over here and say add it to the dictionary. Same thing with Be uh, Be Betel, which is the uh, name of the planet that he is from. And my phone is acting up here. Let me just turn that off. Okay, so you got um, Betel, and you, again, I will add that to the area. And then there's another one here uh, that I want to add. So you go through and you make the adjustments. So here it's saying that I need to uh, add a comma. So I want to add a comma there. Um, passive voice is one of the things that shows up. And sometimes you may say, oh, well, that's fine. I, I, I don't mind a little bit of passive voice. But if you want to go through, you want to correct those passive voices, you would. Another one is wordiness, this whole sentence here. So you might go in there and say, okay, how can I break that sentence into two different sentences or rewrite it so that it's shorter? Um, then we'll go down here and says, you know, it's questioning whether I have the correct um, preposition or not. So we're looking here, um, and I you know, made the change in that case. Sometimes you make the change, sometimes you won't. Here you'll see... Um, click to replace the word, whether throwback should be two words or uh, one word itself. So again, you'll go through and you'll see, again, that's some more wordiness here, some more things that, that you want to kind of take into question itself. Oh, a lot of wordiness right here, so obviously there's some work that I've got to do on that if I want to, you know, particularly for a middle uh, grade uh, book itself. Um, it'll pick up things like uh, possible confused word. You say here you can click to expand this particular one. 
and you'll say, okay, uh, when I put in wince, W-I-N-C-E, did I mean wine? Well, in this case, no, I did not. So I would not necessarily change that. Um, so there's certain things you want to you know, look at. Again, here it talks about 15 year old. Um, you know, add, you know, click to add a hyphen there. So I would add the hyphen there. Okay. So again, you can go on down through and see all the different things that you know you might want to change. Um, and again, it's a, a question of you making the final decision whether to change them or not. It's not automatically done. Okay. So that's enough of that. But let's look over here to the side. You've got some other options. You know, this would be the home page. It would simply take me back to that original home page where I can, you know, clip and paste the next um, uh, the next file itself. Um, or I could do it right down here, just go straight to, to new. Um, I can copy it or I can download it. And here it gets kind of interesting. Here you've got document type. So you can pick what type of document it is. And by default, it's going to be a general uh, uh, type. And depending on what you have, let's go down here to creative. Say it's a creative novel. That will actually change. See, it's doing another check down here, down here at the bottom of the page. It's doing another check. And it's actually less now. It's 16 critical issues. Now, so that had dropped somewhat because I had made some corrections. But let's go back up here and now make it general again and see what happens there. Okay, you see or even there it's still, you know, there's still 27 things to, to consider. So it will change depending on what type of uh, doc document type it is and it will point out what the different types are, whether it's contextual spelling, grammar, punctuation, sentence structure, style, etc. Okay. Then you've got over here also a, plagiar a plagiarism. Now, since I'm writing you know, our original material and I'm not concerned with it, it's not like a college paper or something that I've been doing research on and maybe I got a little bit liberal in uh, uh, the information that I took from the web or something like that, uh, I probably won't use that a whole lot, but you can. There's an off-on switch here that you can use that if, if you do that type of writing. Then you also have vocabulary enhancement which is off, but you can turn it on. Now, again, let's look here. We're at 27 critical issues here. What happens when we turn on vocabulary enhancement? It says there's nine additional ones. So let's just see if we can look and maybe find what those would be. Well, again, if you look at you've got this little icon there, and you find the icon here. So it says a vague word, effectively. And it says click to expand card. So you can expand it and it said, well, maybe you would prefer and it has some suggested enhancements. Now, you don't have to do those, but if you do, what will happen is it will automatically change that word itself. Or, of course, you can go in there, you can ignore it, or you can go in there and put in uh, a better word um, that's not so vague. So that's one of the examples of, of uh, vocabulary enhancements itself. And then... If you really get to the point where you want to uh, do so, you even have the option of sending this uh, uh, file, this information, to, um, you know, to a professional proofreader itself. Okay, so once that's all done, what I would then do, and obviously I have much more to do, uh, but I would just then go uh, Control A to highlight all that, Control C to copy it, and then I'd go back over here to my file and copy it, you know, in into the original, and then go on to the next one. Now, there's one thing that um, I'm not thrilled about. It's really one of the few things that I found that uh, have a bit of a problem. You'll see in my original, um, I've got some italics, and yet when I go over here and drench back over to it, when I do that transfer back and forth, um, I lose the italics. Now that's the only thing that I really lose. The, uh, the spacing, everything else seems to be perfectly fine, but it doesn't handle italics, and I'm pretty sure it would also not 
um, pass along, transfer properly, uh, uh, boldness itself. And there may be some other areas that as well. Okay, so that is Grammarly. Grammarly has uh, three uh, payment options. Uh, you can do a monthly, which is what I originally did. You also have a quarterly. As you have it, you know, uh, available to you for a three month period, and obviously, obviously, also a annual purchase. I would say this is particularly a good possibility um, if you're uh, operating on a shoestring, as many writers are, and you want to do the best you can as far as getting the um, uh, material that you're uh, sending out into the world as clean as possible. This might be a good option. Uh, to to consider as well. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Again, you can find out more about this resource and other resources by going to uh, my website at w, uh, wbradfordswift.com and up here in the resource area, or that would be a direct link, wbradfordswift.com forward slash resources. And for full disclosure, some of those links on there are affiliate links, but all of those that uh, are on there are um, resources that I have personally used and highly recommend for other writers as well. Okay, may you enjoy your writing and may you be prosperous in your success with it as well. Take care, everybody.